Multi-wire branch circuits offer fewer wires, reduce raceway size, reduce voltage drop. However, there can be a problem, a fire hazard, and maybe a, a hazard to the equipment itself. Failure to terminate the phase wires to separate phases can cause the neutral wire to become overloaded, excessive neutral current, and the insulation may be damaged. I'm not sure if we could have had some graphics in between there. We'll see what happens here. So this is an example of a correct connection of a multi-wire brand circuit. Line one, line two, 20 amps, 15 amps on a two-pole breaker. We need to make sure that that breaker, okay, we need to make sure we put common handle ties on this breaker right here because that is one of the requirements of 210.4. Uh, okay, so 15 and 20, okay, 20 amps over here, 15 amps over here, the neutral is going to be 5. But here's the danger. But if you had it inadvertently on line 2 and line 2, well, the neutral is going to be additive, and so we have the overloaded case scenario. Mario, did you ever see panels where the neutral was white, I mean brown? One time. Is that one right? time? And I always wondered why, and and I knew, but I, I you know, I, I couldn't ever put it together until I saw it. So it was, it was, it was helpful. Brian? Oh yeah, many, 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 many times. Yeah. yeah. Well, because see, service work in the early part of my career in the '70s and the '80s, we just took wires and we just put it on breakers. And sometimes you, you have current on, on, a, on, a, on an older home and you're trying not to change the service and you put an amp meter and you realize that oh, I can move some circuits around. That, that's the culprit right there is right. we would see when you saw that was usually when people had installed twins in a panel and just started moving wires onto twin breakers. And so what would end up happening is you'd have two breakers that were side by side previously now on the same phase and they were happened to be a... 12-3 or something of that nature. So. Tandems? T tandems, twins. Tandems, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, twins, tandems. These are the small little breakers that two breakers that fit in. Orange EE panels, wafer breakers, the same thing. The ones that are side by side that are the, you know, the same phase. Okay. You know, we talked about the advantages of multi-wire branch circuit, the reduced voltage drop. We talked about smaller raceway size, savings in wire. Now, if the continuity of the neutral of a multi-wire branch circuit is interrupted, let's say it open, there can be fire and destruction of electrical equipment resulting from over voltage as well as under voltage. And pay attention to that part. All right, a normal multi-wire branch circuit, 600 watt TV operating at 120 volts, 1200 watt hair dryer operating at 120 volts. Line one and line two is 240 volts. Line one to neutral is 120. Line two to neutral is 120. Multi-wire branch circuit. If I know the power, if I know the voltage, I can say 600 watts divided by 120. It gives me 5 amps. 1,200 watts divided by 120 gives me 10 amperes. Now, I'm not doing this this quickly at this point. And you might be like, well, he went so fast. I'm talking. What you can do is you can put it on pause and say, and, and, and do those calculations yourself. And like, okay, it's just validating what we have here so you can see it. That's all I'm doing, so don't get stressed out. So now, I have 120 volts on a TV. I have 120 volts on a hair dryer. The TV is operating at 5 amperes of current. The dryer is going to be operating at 10 amperes of current. And so there, the neutral is going to be the difference between the two. It's going to be 5 amperes. Everything is fine. If, however, somehow that neutral was removed at the panel, then this becomes not a multi-wire branch circuit, line one, line two with a neutral, but becomes a line one and line two circuit, which is going to be a series circuit. Now, the TV was 600 watts at 120, and if we do the, the math on that, let me see if I have it on here somewhere, that resistance, because R is equal to E squared over P, that would have been... 24 ohms is what would have been. Oh, here it is right here, 24 ohms. The hair dryer would have been E squared, would have been 120 squared over 1,200. That would have been 12 ohms. Just telling you, that was what the resistances would have been. Now, I did get an argument the other day, and, I, and, I, and I'd rather fix it and correct it now, Brian. The guy said to me, you can't do that because the TV is not 24 ohms because it's an inductive load. Or, or can I still... 
or should I change this to something? We're okay there? It's just for illustration. Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. All right. So now I have a TV. Whoops, sorry. I had a TV, which is 120, hair dryer 120, 601. Okay, we got that. It'd be 5 amps, 10 amps, 5 amps in the neutral. We're good there. We open the neutral, and when you open the neutral now, if you have the series circuit, Kirchhoff's law of voltage distribution of a closed loop is that it will be distributed according to the law of proportion. This is where it's convenient and proportion. If the TV is 24 ohms and the hair dryer is 12 ohms, that means out of the 240 volts, two-thirds of that voltage is going to go over to the TV, and a third of that voltage of that value is going to go to the hair dryer, which means that the TV is going to operate at 160 volts. And Brian, you were talking about the scenario where you hooked that high leg to that fan. Well, if we hook up 160 volts, and the, the people in the TV are going to go really fast <laughs> for like about a, a hundredth of a second, yeah. okay? Until that gets toasted, the hair dryer is, of course, not going to have much heat at all because heat is a function of the square of the voltage. We went from 120 volts back here, the hair dryer for 120 volts applied. We went down to 80 volts, and at 80 volts squared, that's going to be significantly less heat. And then, of course, the TV got destroyed. So the danger of a multi-wire branch circuit, and I'll tell you some stories here, is that if you open the neutral of a multi-wire branch circuit, and this can also happen to the service of a building, that you could lose a neutral. Now, all these voltages are acting kind of strange, that you can wipe out equipment. Now, I was always thinking about wiping out equipment because of overvoltage, which is the obvious. And I did some experiment in, in, my, in my workshop, and all of a sudden, I noticed when I was doing the voltmeter reading from line one to, of, of the cross the loads, it changed on me. And I was in a pair of shorts in Florida. It was like 40 degrees outside. I was doing something real quick. I put a voltmeter on. I turned on the breaker. I saw the voltage change. And I'm like, oh, whatever. Okay, doesn't matter. I proved to myself that the voltage is what I thought it was. I then go to my workshop, put the tools away, and I see this, the sun coming in as it was setting in the fall in the west. And it's coming through the windows, and it looks like, hallelujah. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I didn't notice that when I started this experiment outside. And I'm thinking, why am I seeing this, this beam of light? And then I look up, and I see out of five of my electric, electronic ballast fixtures, three of them are smoking. Now, I purposely made sure that I did it in a way that there was nothing on, that there's no way. And I forgot that I had the switch on, and that was part of the circuit. And the result is it was operating at the lower voltage. So that inductive load, I never even thought about a multi-wire brand circuit wiping out equipment because of under voltage. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. So that's my story. I have stories about guys to say, Mike, let me tell you my story. One guy was at a Best Buy or no, no, what's, what's the one with all the computers? Is it Best, Best Buy. Best, Best, Buy. Buy. Best Buy. He said, Mike, I was at a Best Buy. I was in a box up in the ceiling, and I took some wires out, and I opened the neutrals, you know, just doing work up there. He says, and all of a sudden, whoosh, he says, a whole series of electronic devices all got toasted. And I'm like, oh, my, I can see that, right? I mean, you open, you, you're not even involved in that. You're just up here. And you're, I'm like, what the heck did you do? He goes, it was my buddy. He said, what they did was they took them, took them all the way to the back, and they returned them all one at a time at different times, saying it was lightning damage. So that person saved his butt in that case. Uh, those are the two stories that I know. Any anybody else here had anything with multi-wire brands, Brian? Yeah, well, I Bunches. mean, several, but uh, probably the most expensive one I had. We were doing a service call to replace a couple of emergencies and exit lights. Small service call, <laughs> <laughs> like we're talking three or four hundred dollar service call. <laughs> and one of my new guys, for whatever reason took the emergency light off the wall and popped the wires, which you don't normally do. You just unplug them. Usually you can unplug them and plug the new one in and popped the neutral splice loose. <clears throat> and every computer in the entire office were on that circuit. And it smoked all the computers in the doctor's office. So oh, that was, it was, it was fun. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And there was no manager to blame. And yeah, yeah, you couldn't get a buddy. To I got to own Eric. that one. Yeah. Oh my goodness gracious. Eric. Mm. Yeah, I was, I was at a panel, I was looking uh, for multi-wire branch circuits to do a report 
and I opened, uh, there was one particular panel and I was looking and I found a multi-wire branch circuit and it was connected to breakers two, four, and 12. Uh-huh, yeah, well, overloaded, yeah. So, no, uh, there, were, there was ABC. Oh, 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 it was ABC. It was ABC, ABC but, yeah. but instead of C being on six, it was on 12. Gotcha. And I'm thinking, well, maybe I could use a maybe a shoelace for a handle tie, you know, because the handle tie is really nothing but indication. Well, here's something that you can tell. It's like, okay, I don't think this is good. Okay, it's when you take the neutral off the neutral bus yeah. and you notice a spark, yeah. and then when you put it back on again, you don't notice the spark. And that was the neutral of a multi-wire branch circuit. And of course, now I have heard cases where the customer calls the contractor, your guys wiped out my TV and this and that. And the guy says, listen, boss, I never went in the house. I was only in the garage. And there are guys out there, I'm not this kind of person in general, I'm not. But there are guys out there that don't like messy panels. And so they want to go oh. clean it up. Yep, right? Yep. They just want to clean it up. You know, while I'm here, let me go ahead and take this out of the way and clean it up. And they're not recognizing. And when you take the neutral off the neutral bus, it could be part of a multi-wire branch circuit. Loads could be on. Yeah. 